Well, it's been a pretty damn long night. In fact, I was myself editing together that podcast all last night because for some reason I just had to get it done. So I've gotten very little sleep uh, this evening. And yet here we are. Zen 2 is finally out. And in fact, Navi's dropping at the same time. So all you people going to Micro Center right now, hopefully buy both. I'm very excited to see how those sales numbers come out as I've been very outspoken that I think there's going to be an insane correlation between Navi's market share capture and how well Zen 2 does. But today's video isn't going to be just some generic thing like, oh, look at what other people said, or even my own review, although I will go into my opinions later. No, today's video is talking about, in fact, how different the tech press is acting now compared to two years ago, when, in my opinion, there's very little reason for them to regard Zen 2 any differently than the way Zen 1 should have been. In fact, if you remember, one of Adored's best videos was the tech press loses the plot. And I think they've caught it again. In fact, I think Linus Tech Tips video opens with a joke that's a little bit too on the nose. Here you see him pointing going, wait, AMD can't be in charge in CSGO or gaming ever. Intel goes on top, not AMD. If you listen to my newest podcast with Paul, not an Apple fan, we both talk near the end of the podcast, or I guess the last third, about how... We expected Ryzen, or at least I expected Ryzen to be good. He kind of expected it to be a disappointment, but neither of us expected it to be as good as it ended up being. Zen 1 blew us away. It blew Chris away. It blew a lot of people away. And yet the tech press at the time seemed to just look at it and go, well, it's 5% weaker in gaming, so I don't know if anything really changes. And yet now when we look at Zen 2, an entirely different story is being sung. Look here at Battlefield 1. At the time, this absolutely blew me away, whereas the tech press seemed to just highlight, well, these quad cores seem to be winning. You know, you have an 8-core processor here using half the energy of Intel's 8-core processor, and yeah, it's what? I mean, really look at the numbers. Less than 10% worse at gaming, and these are at frame rates that are already doing fine at 144 hertz. Yep, everyone said Intel still has advantages but now if we go over to zen 2 oh look it's pretty much the same damn situation isn't it guys uh we have more cores and the gaming performance is just very very comparable for the same price but everything non-gaming is way better it's 12 cores at around 4.2 4.4 gigahertz versus eight cores at five gigahertz now instead of before where it was eight cores at like 3.9 gigahertz versus four to six cores at 4.5 gigahertz. But that's really a very comparable difference to before. Power usage is better, but it was with Zen 1 as well. And it's it's very s similar situation. However, I would say there are two main differences this time around. The first one being the easiest to bring up is I would say Zen 2 has more cherries on top of this Intel shit Sunday. Uh, hashtag Intel shit Sunday. Where... Before Zen 1, perhaps, one non-gaming tasks much better than Intel did in general, but now it's a much more consistent, consistent decimation. It's not just that AMD wins non-gaming now. It's like, before it was pretty laughable, now it is just a slaughter. So... There's that, and there's more little features, like X570 is impre an impressive chipset. You can still use the cheaper motherboards that have been out forever and are very stable. There's just more cherries on top this time. But additionally, there's one bigger thing, and that's that clearly, finally, Intel has burnt all the bridges with the tech press. Intel has pulled so much shit that by now, they no longer have goodwill. Intel has been systematically, it seems, trying to destroy all goodwill and credibility. Whether it's having a processor you pay extra to overclock overheat, and then telling their fans just don't overclock it, or perhaps it would be completely and flagrantly lying about TDP, thus putting reviewers on a dilemma. Do we tell people it's using double the energy of AMD? 
Technically, it only does if it has an unlocked TDP, but all motherboards unlock it by default and most people don't seem to care. Doesn't matter, we'll just lie about our specs compared to AMD. And then let's move on and take a look at principal technology. Really, when things started to go into a bizarro world where they paid people to benchmark AMD processors with half the cores disabled and slower RAM. And then it kept coming with Spectre lying to people, the CEO selling all of his shares in Intel right before these horrible vulnerabilities came out and then tried to cover it all up by paying people to make up vulnerabilities about AMD. But it just never seemed to stop. We then got even more vulnerabilities and I'm sure even more are going to turn up in a month. So really, it wouldn't be completely fair, would it, to accuse the tech press of flip-flopping or simply changing their tune. The truth is that there has been a maturation in the market where people have caught up to and realized that, oh, no, if you have less cores, you will lose performance within two years. No matter what it is, more cores is better. And even more importantly, AMD has been army crawling up a snowy mountain for Mindshare in the past two years. And this is a well-deserved regarding the tech press is giving them at the same time that Intel is lying in the bed they made for themselves. The bed they really, really made for themselves. It's all coming to a head now. Although I will say that I'm not entirely sure that people get how big a deal Zen 2 is. Um, if you ask me, Zen 1 really was like Core 2. Oh, AMD's in charge now, even though people don't understand it yet. And now Zen 2 is Sandy Bridge. Very high reviews, but again, at the same time, they're like, is it any better than like Threadripper? Just like they were like, is the i7-2600K any better than the i7-920? Really? Yes, it is. And we will look back on this like people look back on Sandy Bridge and go, why weren't the reviews stellar? That was when everything changed. I really point this out in my Reality Will Catch Up With Intel video, probably my first video to get a, a decent amount of notoriety, where I just highlighted, look, the share price of AMD didn't go down until Ivy Bridge dropped, and that's because people still doubt competitors, even if there's two wins in a row. You need three. And if you look at this article here, you can see, and it was 2012, actually, the end of it, where everyone was making the AMD has fallen apart articles. It was Ivy Bridge. And Zen 3 will be Ivy Bridge. So I really don't have that much else to say about Zen 2. Certainly not that hasn't been said better in actual reviews, and I do highly recommend Cortex's review, actually. He does a very interesting video with scrubbing and showing how easy it is to use timelines with a 12-core processor. Very good. I hope, Cortex, you keep doing more of those. And as always, of course, Steve at Hardware Unboxed kills it with his easy-to-read graphs and comprehensive coverage. Go check those out. The final thoughts about it, though, are this. I'm probably definitely waiting for Threadripper. I am. Uh, I'm going to wait for Threadripper. Uh, I agree with Steve on that one, uh, at least to see how it is. And I want to see where prices fall back and forth because, man, I do think a price war is coming. Additionally, i5s are officially idiotic. They are moron devices. Seriously, a six-core without hyper-threading, now with these new products out, I think $100. That's how much an i5, uh, even the unlocked one, should cost. And the i3s should be 70 bucks. And, in fact, they'll have tough competition because the R5-1600 is falling below $100. Well, the R5-2600 is at $120. So AMD's entire old lineup is now slowly all moving below $200. Don't be afraid to buy those. That is the best price performance. And anything above $200... All AMD now. All recommendations for AMD. No recommendations for Intel anymore. They are in serious trouble. But now, of course, I have to say a few words about Navi. And just like with Ryzen, I really want to emphasize, actually even more so, to watch 
Cortex review of Navi. I pretty much completely concur with his assessment, especially even after seeing other people's reviews. The fact is, and I have to gloat a little, how many times did I say to you guys, wait for reviews on Navi before you judge it? And it was for two reasons. Number one, I think it was going, I at least thought, and I'm now vindicated that it would perform better than most people seem to think it would perform, which is around a 1080 Ti. It's actually maybe not quite as strong on average as a 1080 Ti or 2070 Super, but it is trading blows. There are games where it actually beats the 1080 Ti and the 2070 Super, and it does so for less money. And I also said that AMD would not let prices get out of hand. If they're pricing it at 450 or now 400, they would do so knowing it's going to be a good product, even if they're charging more than before. And that they want a price war, and the price war is beginning with NVIDIA. Although I'm not entirely sure it's because NVIDIA preemptively striked Navi effectively. I've also said that I thought the Super was the dumbest launch in history, even dumber than the original RTX launch, and that's because NVIDIA's response to lower Navi prices was to raise prices so like i expected the rx 570 and vega 56 are still the best price performance and there's no reason that would ever change they're older cards you're never going to beat a 570 below 130 and you're never going to beat a vega 56 below 300 but those vega 56s won't be there forever although i wouldn't worry too much about the 570s because i know amd's got another navi 10 cut down card coming and then they're going to have another smaller die below that so i I think that entire market below 200 is fine. But yeah, get Vega 56 if you want that price performance for 1440p. Having said that, Navi is powerful enough to be recommended in its own right. As Cortex points out, the 5700 XT is an excellent $400 4k gaming card it is a 4k 60 card it's not perfect but in many ways this is what the rtx 2070 or 2080 should have been a 400 to 450 dollar micro flagship that's not quite as good as the best but man does it game well for the dollar and it really does it 400 and the 5700 non-xt hey it's better than vega 56 and 64 and i think it's cooler it looks really nice actually but I don't know. I would almost say, yeah, you want Vega 56 or the 5700 XT. And actually, on the subject of buying things while they're available, there's a couple more things to talk about. Number one is mining. The crypto market is starting a new bull run, people. It is. Now, I think it could auto-correct down to maybe seven or 8000 in the short term, but I do think we're going to new all-time highs for Bitcoin, and therefore, some of the altcoins within a year and i don't know if it's gonna go absolutely horse shit like it did before but that's something to keep in the back of your head i think the price war will continue for a couple months but there might be a ticking time bomb here however i do not expect prices to get anywhere near as bad as before and i expect vega to stay the preferred option for miners just remember that if the 5700 non-XT trends towards $300, and I actually kind of expect it to over the next month, it is going to mine better than Vega 64. Not as good at Radeon 7, but if it ever gets to 300 where it's half the price of Radeon 7 or less than half, and it mines over half as well for half the energy, people will start buying those for mining. And actually, on the subject of the Radeon 7... I, I, you know, if you're someone, it, it's for semi-professionals or people who don't care too much but care a little bit about price performance and they're building a new 4K gaming rig they want to last a long time. That 16 gigabytes of HBM is going to last forever. Maybe you just want that because you like the new technology. I know that was honestly a big part of it for me. I wouldn't get Radeon 7 right now. That thing launched with about a 10% markup and... It was at $700. It's already trending towards $670 right now. Prices have come down. It costs about $500 to make one. That thing will probably be a $600 card right in between the 2080 and 2070 in a month or so. So if you still don't need or want Navi, you really just want a cool 16 gigabyte, one terabyte per second of bandwidth card like Radeon 7, I think that is going to get an official price drop. Buy of a hundred dollars in about a month or so so just wait 
for that. And of course, I love it for editing. It is insanely good at editing. It is the thread ripper of graphics cards. And really put the 5700 XT in perspective. A 40 compute unit Radeon graphics card is trading blows with the 1080 Ti on a tiny die. This spells amazing things for RDNA 2.0 coming in probably about six months. I really think that well, the prices aren't great, they weren't perfect with the 7000 series, the HD 7000 series at launch either, but it was AMD taking the performance crown. Navi may actually take the performance crown if they can really scale it up effectively, fix any remaining weaknesses in their architectures, and launch this sucker before NVIDIA gets to 7 nanometer with a full lineup, which I think they could. And so I'm really excited. We might have a 7970 moment coming sooner than people think. And just to sum everything up, let's see, what have we talked about? Zen 2, Barnstormer, it is now it. AMD controls the CPU market. Zen, all the way here. I'm excited for Threadripper. I'll be waiting to see where that is, and that's going to probably burn everything that Intel even has up to 28 cores. And then below $200, we even have AMD's previous generations, which are still good. The R5 1600 is an excellent budget chip, cleaning house, Intel needs to put their i5s at $100, their i7s at $200, and their i9s at $300. This is insanity. And although I think it's a little weird the press is regarding this well, but they didn't completely gush over Zen 1, AMD's earned their mind share. They've earned it this time. And Intel has burned all their bridges. So it's really not a surprise. And it is commendable. Maybe this industry isn't going to shit. Maybe people are learning Maybe. I mean, I know NVIDIA still seems to be getting away with some shenanigans, but you do see a decent amount of channels bringing up how Super isn't that good. And on that note, Navi is better than I thought it would be. It really is, and I, and I said you should wait for the reviews because I really don't think AMD is going to act completely stupid anymore, and they haven't. The 570, of course, is the best budget card, but if you want something above 1080p, 60 hertz gaming... Vega 56 isn't the only reasonable option. The 5700 XT is a solid high-end gaming card for anyone getting a 3900X right now or lower. And there will be better cards on the way. So yeah, this is fascinating. Um, please tell me what you think in the comments below. Like, share this video. It was a tremendous amount of work. I'll, of course, have other videos coming out, I'm sure, when I come up with other insights I think people need to add to this. And, of course, if you support me on Patreon, I will talk to you on Discord about this. We have a lot of people there, actually, who have... <laughs> some people have driven hours to Micro Center to get there at launch. They have Navi cards. They have uh, Zen 2 processors, and we're talking about it right now. All right. Thank you.